hey, Rev Show fans, we, we talk a lot about brands at that kind of concept stage in startup tech companies. Uh, and at RevTech, you all know, we're really focused around helping companies in their infancy uh, figure out early capitalization strategy and also early go-to-market strategies or product market fit. Um, it's really interesting today to have Paul Song in. Paul is the founder and CEO of Detail Provisions, or your managing partner, right? Yes. At, at uh, Detail Provisions here in Dallas. Um, so Paul got his start in building direct-to-consumer brands. Uh, particularly, he started with a company called um, Cufflinks.com when they were just beyond that infancy stage, right? And, and you helped come in and help the company get to scale, early scale. Uh, I want to tell us a little bit about the backdrop of coming into cufflinks.com and taking it from kind of that uh, infancy stage to adoles adolescent stage where you really started scaling. Sure, yeah. So <clears throat> thanks for having me. Um, at cufflinks.com, I was the third employee there. And it was like a lot of probably brands that you work with in that everybody does everything. I actually literally started out to add product to the website and put together customer emails uh, on a weekly basis. But that, um, as we grew, uh, the more things that needed to happen, and, and I was there for almost 10 years, and uh, worked my way up from product adder on the website to VP of marketing to eventually CEO of that company. And um, through that process, there's a big, big um, path between starting out and really hitting scale and working with Fortune 100 retailers and, and all sorts of things. So um, what really struck me the most was <clears throat> how far a great product and idea can take you, but then what it takes to, to hit the next plateau because it's a whole series of of other challenges that you, in a lot of cases, would have never dreamed of. So I, I remember in e, I was in EO for years, and when you get in EO and join a forum group, you do this exercise in a group called the Lifeline, where you like plot the curve of your life and like what were the high points and low points, and you call those like critical junctures. So just thinking of your experience with cufflinks.com, Paul, what were those two or three critical junctures from when you started, I think it was like half a million revenue, and when you scaled it up to like 15 million revenue, what, what were those juncture points along the way where things shifted suddenly, either for better or for worse? Well, the first, the first part of that process was the, the founder who I worked with um, had an incredible idea, right? And had this opportunity where he was the original owner of the domain. Um, and so we were, a young, hungry team that, that just worked on sheer effort and, and gut, really. Uh, and so we were fortunate enough to make good decisions uh, by way of product and marketing early on. Um, but then the next, the next kind of benchmark was uh, the decision to be omni-channel and to go by way of wholesale and start to make our own products where you could really drive and, and dictate and get better margin improvement and things like that. Much like what you're seeing why so many people are in the direct-to-consumer space now. Um, and then what was really the impetus of, of me starting my next company was when we relied less on gut and started to get more strategic in our growth. We grew every single year, which uh, we were fortunate enough to do. Uh, the first half of that process in my tenure there, it was really just gut-based decisions. Uh, and so the next critical juncture was when we hired a CFO for us, and that really changed our, our approach to a more uh, method-based, strategy-based. Um, you started having real metrics and processes <laughs> yes. that got measured I, and... <laughs> I joke, early on, we would do inventory on Fridays, and we had this little office, and we would literally eyeball boxes of products, and if we could see some, and we didn't see the bottom of the box, we had enough, and then we'd go to lunch. Uh, <laughs> versus 
when you're dealing with department stores and you're dealing with these global licenses and things where you need to make sure you have product, um, you know, that's a small example of, of kind of what life is like early on versus uh, as you grow. So, Now, I guess you sold a lot of cufflinks. How many cufflinks went through that oh my gosh. company in your tenure there? <laughs> uh, we sold, I would say, hundreds of thousands of cufflinks. Um, it was a great product. It, one of the best things about it was um, a pair of cufflinks fit you, whether you're four foot tall or eight feet tall. That's true. You don't have to stock every width That's and size right. like That's shoes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or apparel. That's Absolutely. cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, so fast forward to your next venture, Detail Provisions, which, which you now run. Um, so I think you started, it sounds like you started Detail Pro Provisions to really leverage what you learned about like all the back office support it took to scale from half a million to 15 million in revenue. Absolutely. So, that's the inspiration I take it is leveraging that experience you developed with cufflinks.com and bringing it out to other brands to help them accelerate more quickly. So the first half of my time at cufflinks was really about product and brand and just churning out product, product, product. But once we got to, you know, over, call it two and a half, three million dollars of revenue, you really start to have to do a lot more on the operations side. And decisions at that size are a lot more critical and mistakes are a lot more critical as you get bigger. And so I found myself spending most of my time working through the operations of the business. And so um, where early on I was more focused on creative and, and product and brand, I would find myself in tons of meetings, tons of um, discussions about shipping, HR, all these other things that really drive and are critical to a business. And so I started Detail Provisions with the thought of how do we create an ecosystem or a platform where brands can really continue to focus on things that propel and drive sales growth, which is product and brand, and allow us to alleviate the challenges and, and the time constraints around operating a business. And so now what we do is we provide shipping and logistics, we provide customer support for e-commerce brands, we do bookkeeping and accounting, um, and a host of other things that are operations based so that founders can continue to do what they're best at, which is drive their product and brand growth. Yeah, well it's exciting to hear, Paul, because for, for us, we love finding new brands early uh, in their infancy and, and can really help them with that early capital formation and with, um, and with you know, just facilitating them developing that brand and really understanding and serving their customer. But the ability to have all those systems ready that can scale as fast as they can get consumers placing orders uh, is incredible. I'm sure that's valuable to every brand you're working with is that ability to really focus on the product, the brand, and the customer. It is. You know, I think it's exciting because you do work with early stage brands. Uh, the reality is, is that in, in some of those cases, looking at the metrics, the right metrics are, are a, a less, an exercise in, in, in um, you know, finding the right ones and it's a fact finding mission because it's not inherent to everybody that things like customer acquisition costs and, and unit economics are, those things are just not necessarily things that you're born knowing. Uh, but then, on the operational side of things where we also help out dramatically is you have to get to a certain scale before you can have your own team on things. And so going back to time, uh, our ability to, to provide time to founders again, um, in a lot of cases in early startups, everybody's shipping boxes, everybody's you know reporting sales tech, all these kind of unsexy things that there are about a business just lead to time anchors and so that's what we do we you're able to pop into an ecosystem that a business doing 20 million dollars uh, of revenue operates at and that's not necessarily something you can do on your own as you're starting out all right last question paul i promise sure you've been kind with your time uh so there are t 
tons of direct-to-consumer startup brands out there today. I don't have stats in front of me. In fact, I have an empty desk in front of me, <laughs> if you all notice. I have a nice citizenry cup, though. It is a nice cup. So um, tons of startup brands. I don't have the stat, but I would venture to say more than 90% of them do less than a million a year of revenue. Um, it sounds like you are the provider for those that would like to grow and scale to larger size and be part of that 10% that scale and, and serve many consumers. Absolutely, there's, I read an article the other day that there's over 830,000 merchants on Shopify. And so a lot, there's of, them, a good a lot of them are going to be in that uh, range. And so it's, for me, it's the ability to work with these brands uh, at an exciting time. It's my ability to, to kind of have, uh, go in a time machine almost and be able to expound upon and give advice uh, on things that worked when I was at that stage and also more importantly things that didn't work and, and to try to alleviate some of the the trials that that come in in growing a, an e-commerce business so for all you brands out there that are pure startup phase you need to know Paul song and detail <laughs> provisions uh, if you'd aspire to really scale your product uh, to full potential Really appreciate your time, Paul. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thanks and for congratulations me. on all your success. Thank you.